So we're going to be taking a look at the new Mid Journey 6. Now this has been out for a few months now, but I'm going to give you a full architecture guide on how to use this and how we're using it within the architecture industry. Now Mid Journey 6 is a huge leap from Mid Journey 5. Uh, there's a few differences and key things you need to take away when using Mid Journey 6. So to go over some of the changes that they've made to it, it's a lot more refined, you'll get more clearer looking images. And there's been a huge change in the language you use the prompt. I know we spent an entire year getting used to this whole weird kind of AI prompt language that even people who don't really know much about AI started to kind of understand this and start to think about it because you know in Mid Journey 4 and 5 if you wanted a scene you'd have to use these random as words like um you say you want to show a building you'd write a beautiful majestic uh wondrous building in 8k 4k ultra realistic uh, all these like really strange terms that we would be using. All of that is now gone within Mid Journey V6 and you can actually, it's more just about describing the scene itself and describing what you want to see within the scene. And so, you know, this could be anything, but I saw a different general video on Mid Journey V6. Um, and this guy has come up with a pretty good methodology into how you write your mid-journey uh, prompts and how do you structure them. So we're going to get into that. So first off, I'm going to show you how you should be setting up your prompts and the most effective way to set up your prompts to give you exactly what you want to show. So what we do is something called the 242 rhythm method. Honestly, explains it like it's a rhythm. When you're writing your prompts, you do it within a rhythm. As I've made a little table here, I'm going to show it uh, as I'm talking about this. You set up your prompts in a 242. So it starts off with two two things, subject or your camera, and then the setting that it's in. So in, in, uh, I'll give you one example. We've got a Mies van der Rohe house here. So the way I set it up is you go, if you want this to be a wide angle view or some sort of mid shot or some sort of particular camera angle that you want, you'd state this at the beginning with the subject. In this case, I just did a view, but you could go a cinematic view, a architectural photography view, a wide angle shot, a bird's eye view. So you go camera angle, of the subject is a Mies van der Rohe house. So that's how you set up the initial scene, is literally camera and subject. Or to further elaborate on that, it could be camera, subject in this setting. So a Mies van der Rohe house in a calm forest. You still wanna put these kind of weird um, describing words like calm within it. It kind of helps set the overall mood and tone. So that's two, then you wanna go with four. So you got your du du two and then you go to four which is then you add your shorter describing words um your kind of keywords to build upon this so just keywords phrases the kind of mood that you want or the type of architecture the type of photography especially certain cameras that you want to put in that's where you describe this especially also the color grading the color palette that you want to put in so in this example say solarization and then here's a good camera prompt is reflex 35BL camera, Canon K30, you know, you can put in what camera lens you want, what type of camera, so you get that real uh, photography look. Now I've said architecture photography, warm and orange, uh, you know, warm green and orange color palette, solarization captures the essence of nature. This is just one example. I'll show you um, in the next step of the video how we put this into different scenes. There's your two, and then, so that's two, four, then back to two to finish off your prompt. Um, this is where you describe particular color palettes or especially particular scene details. Say you wanted, you know, say birds flying away in the scene. This is where you'd put and birds flying in the distance or a man uh, interacting in this certain thing, you know, or any actions that you want to show, say the, the building being activated by the public or something like that. And then the last one is uh, just your aspect ratio, style type, these kind of dash dash things at the end. Uh, this first prompt I've shown as an example is literally like the most basic version of this, which is why it doesn't quite follow that 242 method because I've made this prompt just as simple as it can be. But when you get into a more advanced prompt and you want to show specific things, then the best way is to use this method and just elaborate on each but definitely keep that 242 kind of rhythm going. So it's just camera, subject, describing word, describing word, describing word, and then particular scene detail, and then aspect ratio, style, and then boom, that's your prompt. Mid Journey V6 does improve in a sense of if you have an extremely long prompt. I know in previous versions, 
it kind of struggled with that, but still I like to keep the prompts sh as short as you can and let Mid Journey do most of the work. So now I'm going to take you through about three or four examples of previous ones I've created using these simple prompts and how you get the best architectural photography and different styles within this. And then after that, we're gonna go and actually create some prompts and show you how to use particular geolocation scenes. So say in the architecture industry, mostly Mid Journey is being used for creating reference imagery within design reports, competitions, and things like this. And you wanna you know, show renders within a certain location. So I'm gonna show you the secret to doing that. But now we're gonna look at some examples. So here we have our Mies van der Rohe example, um, the exact same prompt that I showed you earlier, but it looks like this. Now I'm gonna kinda of let this play and then um, I'm gonna kinda of commentate over it so you can really just look at the scene, take it in, look at the prompts and see how it relates to the scene. So we'll go on to the next one. So this one's a more kind of clean Zaha Hadid um, parametric looking building. So some of the prompts we've used here is still the same, a view of a modern Zaha Hadid building with coastal views. Architecture photography, still stating that color palette, uh, you go fragmented architecture, you add in some of these things like biophilic design, captures essence of nature, solarization, you know, maybe you might want to add some more clean prompts, just like parametric or clean, minimalistic kind of things you want to add to this kind of lighter Zaha Deed look. And then our next one is a more moody, dark, Daniel Leibskind courtyard, sharp architecture. This one still keeps the prompts very basic. We want to keep it just as a view of Daniel Leibskind museum, urban courtyard, simple, and then just moody architecture photography. And that's all you need really, because it's created a pretty amazing result just from such simple prompts. Now here is the exact same prompt as before, but I've added style raw. So by adding style raw to it, it gives you a more realistic kind of raw photography look. If we go back and look at the previous ones, it's a lot more cinematic and filmy. And then you go to the raw, uh, that's mid journey trying to produce the most realistic and photography kind of look. So those are three very basic scenes that I've tried to set up so you can kind of get an understanding on how exactly these prompts are laid out and how you should lay them out if you're wanting to just generate ideas or generate prompts that are specific to the thing that you're designing. Say you want to create some reference images, some reference renders and whatnot. Now let's jump into mid journey. Let's just, let's just create something together using these kind of prompts. Let's make something pretty obvious, but I'm gonna try and get a Frank Gehry kind of look. You know, so depending on what style your building is that you wanna create some reference imaging for, just, you know, spend some time putting together some keywords that capture the sort of essence of your building and what you wanna create. So let's say we wanna create something similar to this, the Guggenheim Museum, but without using the actual Guggenheim Museum word, because we wanna create something similar to this, however, not exactly like it. So we're gonna go, imagine, we'll go at a wide angle view. Keep in mind the 242 method, a wide angle view. So that's one, and then of a uh, Frank Gehry building or let's say we want to make it a museum so a wide angle view of a frank gary museum in the city i don't know let's just make it tokyo for some reason in the city of tokyo so there's our two a wide angle view of a frank uh, gary museum in the city of tokyo now we're going to add a bunch of keywords so from these previous prompts i like the word moody you wanna go architecture photography. We add the word urban. What kind of color palettes? Actually, because these this building has a lot of uh, what looks like to be brushed steel. I'm not sure if it actually is this, this material, but we'll go brushed steel and glass architecture. Now we're gonna set a kind of color palette. So we wanna go with like a silver monochromatic color palette. I think that's pretty good to keep it kind of basic color palette. So that was two, four, and now we'll go back to two. We want to describe particular details of the scene. So I want people walking in and museum entrance of a busy street. We go dash dash. Now we set up the aspect ratio. So either you go one by one, which is a square image or 16 by 9, which is your typical kind of uh, widescreen look, or I like to do 7 by 3, which is an ultra wide for kind of the cinematic uh, look. And we'll go style raw. Press enter. Uh, keep in mind we didn't set the time of day or anything, so it's going to come up with something completely random, but we'll see. So upon inspecting this, you can see, yes, we've absolutely got what we wanted. Um, people walking in and out of the entrance, busy street, kind of looks like Tokyo a little bit. Um, we haven't set the camera specifically for it so it's kind of trying to figure out where to put it 
all of these are at eye level. But it is the wide angle view. It definitely has that Frank Gehry building kind of look. If I saw this, I'll think that Frank Gehry probably made one of these. Uh, these bottom two, it's a little bit hit or miss, but I definitely like these top two. Just you press upscale, and um, I see that looks pretty good. I mean, then go ahead and say change the view if you want it to be a bird's eye view. For reference, we'll just modify the script sorry the input slightly instead of a wide angle view we'll try a bird's eye view now i'm going to add in the prompt dji mavic 3 which is apparently you use this for bird's eye view and drone shots so i'm curious to see what we do with the exact same prompt but instead making it of a bird's eye view using the lens of a drone camera maybe we could have uh, taken out people walking in and out because now that's kind of setting the camera back to the ground but let's see how Mid Journey comprehends us specifically asking for it to give us a bird's eye view. I'm actually very impressed with what it's able to come up with here because it's pretty much given us exactly what we've asked for. I'm going to upscale this fourth one. So there you go, there's a, yeah. Wow, it's even got reflections in the windows of the people. Not sure if it's entirely accurate, but I mean, that is pretty much what we asked for. So that's how we get those kind of bird's eye view, I guess using those drone shots. So that's an example of how you use that structure of the 242 method. So now we're gonna get into the final part of this video. Say you're an architecture student, you're an architect or you're a designer and you're doing a competition or you're doing a concept design phase building and you want to show reference images in a particular location. Previously, this wasn't really possible in Mid Journey version five and four because it, Mid Journey couldn't really understand your image or what you're trying to do. But in Mid Journey V6, we found that this is still a little bit hit or miss, but you can show specific locations of where you want your reference imagery to be. So I'm going to show you how you do this. We're going to go to Google and we're going to find an image that is an existing location. So let's say let's go to Maps and we're going to find somewhere where we want to make our building. Well, since I'm in Australia, we'll do Australia. Let's say we're going to do a building in Gold Coast. Now, Let's say we're doing a design competition for a building in, I don't even know where the city center is here, but Surfers Paradise. Let's say it's in Macintosh Island. Let's just do a quick street view and have a look. Say we're doing a, one of these clean apartment building competitions for this specific area of the Gold Coast. So what we do, the location we're doing is Macintosh Islands. Now let's say we're trying to do some sort of modern render, clean looking architectural render reference design for a concept that's in this location. So go to Google, Macintosh Island, Gold Coast. This is where it gets a little bit difficult because you want to find a specific shot of where your building would be. This one looks pretty good. Go ahead, save the image. We're going to try two things here. This method definitely works if you want to show the interior of a building with the view being your location. Say this is at the location of our building. Go ahead into Mid Journey and just put this in. If you just drag and drop it into Mid Journey, press Enter. Now it's uploaded your image. So say we want an interior shot looking out to this view. So we go Imagine, and you drag and drop your image in. Now we just do the same thing as before. So we want a balcony view looking out to our scenery. So we go a view from a modern architectural balcony looking out to Gold Coast. Where is this location again? Macintosh Island. Looking out to Macintosh Island Gold Coast Australia so there's our two and a view from a modern architectural balcony looking out to Macintosh Island Gold Coast Australia then we add in our keywords architecture photography let's say we're designing some sort of clean white building so we go with minimalistic modern architecture and we'll keep it in style raw so let's see what happens with input this image and give it the, this prompt and see if it kind of uses this image that we've inputted. So here we go. You see um, Mid Journey hasn't, oh, well, this is pretty good. This is something that struggles a little bit with still. It doesn't give you the exact location. Like it's taken these buildings and it's kind of moved them around and whatnot. So you definitely want to keep these as still just small reference images that you kind of brush over rather than making it a big, you know, I wouldn't put this on the front of a design report or a competition saying, here's our design. It's definitely not made for that or at that point yet, but you can see it's kind of taken that essence of our input image. A good handy feature is actually, say I like this bottom one, it looks good, but we're not really seeing much architecture in it. So we'll upscale, now you can vary by region. So you click on this and we'll select just our bottom portion. Or around, say we want to actually show some sort of balcony or architecture within this. We'll just go straight up and architectural, a view from an architectural balcony. 
Let's just kind of see what it comes up with by doing this. This again takes a lot of experimentation and variation. It is very hit or miss. You can definitely spend hours and hours trying to recreate each thing and you know, iteration, but the vary by region tool is pretty good. So I'd say we were somewhat successful with some of these. You see on the left, you got the balconies showing. This could be a good just little reference image to put in with some more experimentation. You know, this thing won't really create it straight off the bat. You see it's missed some of the prompts that we've put in, but you know, you kind of got this balcony going on. You could use this as a smaller reference image, but this takes a lot of experimentation and trial and error. We did exact same method. Yeah, I can't really show you the prompts that we use for this one. Um, I don't think this was actually used within our firm, but this is some experimentation that I did of something similar where we put in a specific location. And it, you see, we do have successful results, so it does work. It all depends on your actual language prompting and how you set it up. And it really just takes a lot of experimentation for each scene that you want to set up. But there we go. So that was my guide into using Midjourney version 6 for architecture and the different ways that you can use it. Obviously, it's still got a bit uh, way to go before it's, you know, a seamless pipeline of things you can do to just create good imagery, but it's definitely a huge step in the right direction. And I hope that helps you, you know, and you can kind of get into mid journey, start experimenting and create some of your reference images and whatnot for your own projects. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching and I hope that helps.